All right, everybody, today is the day to put in a remote starter. Winter's, winter's bone is coming. It's getting chilly. I don't want to walk outside and start my car. I'm like you. You know, I like creature comforts. <laughs> so I picked up this CompuStar off of the interwebs. Um, this is just a one-way, I think a two-way, I don't know what the difference is. If you start the car two-way, I don't know, maybe it does something like lights up I, I don't know base price cheap cheap one i didn't want to go with the, the they, they range up to two three hundred dollars that just plug in this, so this is the basic one and i'm just going to be hooking this up basic like i want to start parking lot parking ugh, parking lights come on so you know it's started and um i don't care about door locks and all that so for now we'll see maybe i'll change my mind but you can adapt. Yeah, this will do door locks. The other thing you can add to this, I do need to add to this because I have a chip key. You need a separate piece that goes around the lock cylinder and think makes it think there's a chip in there. Um, you can get those also aftermarket, Amazon, etc. Uh, but for now, I have a spare key. I'm probably just going to leave it in the ignition. I'm, I'm not in the city anymore. I can just do that. All right, but step one of these foolish things is doing your homework. This is the instructions it comes with. Uh, and it's not always crystal clear what they're talking about. So the only connector, the basic connector you need is the main one for voltage, ground, ignition, starter. These other ones are for programming. <clears throat> uh, I need one terminal on this connector for the brake light. And the other ones are door locks, etc. This is the antenna that'll plug in. This is for like if it's a diesel, I think you need a thermistor. This is accessory. This is all like accessory stuff. And apparently, you can get a chip for these. It just plugs in and talks to your factory alarm system. Maybe I I don't know. It is all over not over my head, but I just didn't really care. So reading what they say, 12 volts of constant is your red wire. That's going to your battery at all times. So I ran those through the firewall. I'll show you. We're down here under the dash. I haven't had to pull any panels at that point. Um, I went up here. This is like my cable for nice rubber connector. Either way, it's either a hood latch or a brake cable. But I just poked a hole through the rubber. I'm running my two powers through there. There are 30 amp fuse, uh, and then the I'm gonna you know the whole this is that whole harness that comes with the kit, the box. I'm gonna have it up under here, up into the dash, and the rest of the wires are all gonna be inside here. My fuse box is right here, as well as all the connectors coming down from my steering column, where I was able to find all my wires that I need. Um, there's actually some remnants of somebody did have an alarm or something, but, but these aren't the wires. I'm only using one of these, so I don't know what they were doing. The ones over here are for the door locks, so I might be able to tie into those. Um, what else can I tell you? So, you know, these panels just pop off depending on your vehicle. Clips, screws, etc. Um, yeah, so how did I know what wires to use oh that's another one more homework so i went on the interweb and found my specific vehicle and i just punched in alarm uh this is a Mazda tribute older one 03 ford escapes the same and put in alarm installation and somebody had a post I'll, I'll stick the picture in here of the wire colors so that really helped so then i went down to so it's up like coming in 12 volt see this is positive 12 volt light what the what the hell does that mean well under these instructions which i looked up for this compu star i found the 900 model if you go into their description it's a little bit different than what's written there it's gonna say red is constant green white this is the positive parking light wire that triggers when you lock and unlock the doors well it doesn't say that there it just says 12 volt light so you, 
a lot of uh, your homework is interpreting what the hell they're talking about. So yeah, that's gonna go to the parking light, positive battery, uh, positive lead to the parking light. I found that under my dash at that connector using the picture of, I found of the factory wiring, checked it with a test light, turned the parking light switch to on, I get power there, turn it off, it goes away. So that's easy, easy peasy. Um, our next one is another 12 volt constant to the battery. All right, so that's these two, the red and the red and white are going out to my battery. I showed you those two. The white wire. This says in this instructions must go to the HVAC blower motor. Um, over on here, it's saying just 12 volts accessory. Now accessory to me is the accessory position of the key, which is one click accessory, run, and start so or are they, or do they want to go into your blow motor so that you turn on your heater or air conditioning i don't know i'm just going to something in the accessory position which this is good instructions 12 volts with key in the on zero and cranking and then back to 12. so i did that and next is a blue wire i don't think i need this at all this is another confusing one um over here it says selectable by jumper default ignition and that, they're talking about jumper in the in the control module there's a, a switch that can jump between two different settings basically so i think it's saying that because you can program these it's you can change it via programming so i don't even think i need that because i'm not doing anything like that uh but it says 12 volts. This powers up the remote starter. The behavior of this wire says electable by jumper inside the chrome module. Yeah, so I don't think I need that because I'm getting my start signal here on the yellow wire. This is 12 volt positive. This wire is kind of a remote starter. This is what's actually starting the vehicle. Um, and that's over here, yellow wire, 12 volt starter. Next one is a green 12 volt ignition output input. Oh, how can that be an output and an input? Well, let's interpret that. 12 volt positive output and input. This wire must be connected to the vehicle ignition for remote start and valet remote start programming. Okay, that tells me right there. I'm not using programming or any of that, so I don't need this wire. As far as I know, we'll see. And of course, you need a ground, black. And then I said the other connector over here on the box that I needed was just one, and it's for the foot brake. So that's basically, it's going to kill the uh, starter once you're in the vehicle. Uh, I think it's pin 9. Brake 12 volt input. This input must be connected as it provides a shutdown for the remote starter. All right, so when you get in the vehicle, you hit the brake, it shuts the car off. But I've had starters on the back. I think once you get in, if you just cycle the key to the on position, then you don't have to shut the car off, restart it to drive away. So, um, but yeah, that one is necessary. Now, there's other ones too. There's on that same trouble. There's like a safety, like a hood latch. So it won't start if somebody's working on your car. I don't need that. Um, and then think that's horn uh you can you could cycle the door locks you know I, come on i just want to start the car up all right all that being said so i went i took off the column but i didn't have to because this is the ignition this is for the chip this wiring the wiring i want is the back harness back of the ignition cylinder and it goes down basically and everything plugs in down here these fuse box and connectors you could tie in up there, but it's just messy and it's easier to work down here. But I was able to find all my stuff by just basically test light. Um, I kind of knew the colors from what I got. So I think one is, like I said, they already had me using. I'm going to use that one, I believe. Just probing it, turning the key. Is it on, off, etc., etc. The parking light one also is down here. It's on another connector. Everything's down here, which is great. The only one I have to get is that brake light. And he is up here. You get two different brake switches to choose from. Usually that happens with the uh, ones for cruise control, ones for brake lights. I already stripped back this wire here. 
And you see how I did that in the middle? I'll show you the tool that does that because that's how I'm going to tie in. This is a great tool to have. It's basically an inline wire stripper. You put the wire in the middle, clamps, strips. I mean, you can, obviously, you can use it on the end, but you can also put it in the middle of a wire. It'll separate, which is nice. Um, I made up these two. We're going to my battery. I'll show you that. We have the two coming through the firewall. Nice and rubber. They can't, you know, you do not want these to chafe on anything. So you got to make sure that it's definitely rubber. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow this harness. And I want a little more length, so I'm going to solder those connectors coming under this is my relay under the hood box and the batteries right here you could go right to the battery but that's that's eh, kind of janky and hack so you go over here right oh look there's already nice terminals they're both going to be positive going through this fuse so maybe i'll do the outlet which is probably this one but anyway i'll put a ring terminals tuck all that in nice the wire strippers, this is a seam ripper. This is for sewing. Go get this from your wife, or mom, or grandmother. It's good for cutting harnesses open to tape. Great tool to have. A couple different cutters, test light. I'm going to use those connectors. The torch for soldering, solder iron, heat shrink tubing, and a bunch of connectors and wire. I got loom if I need it too. So yeah, that was a whole lot of talking. Whew. Sorry about that, but you're over your head already i mean yeah that's why people pay to get these installed i guess um so yeah i'm just gonna start i'm gonna leave my batteries for last i'm gonna start doing the the connections for under the dash here find a good ground and etc etc now to make an inline connection i did this i see i separated them i stuck the seam ripper through there now i can stick this wire right through the middle easy mike easy yeah right through the middle and twist it and solder it and that's these are i don't like doing connections like this but then i can tape it back and you can't get heat shrink but you can at least tape it slow down mike I just recorded this and didn't record it basically <laughs> so those are my parking lights on off I wanted to find, uh, that's obviously the connector. It's going down to that same area, like I said. And by just probing a bunch of these, I figured out yesterday that this brown wire is my parking light. So parking lights on, off, on, off. So that's that one. Something like that. Yeah, I don't have, my fingers are way too fat to be doing this. I'm gonna wrap that around, put it through through the hoe, wrap, where's my finger? Wrap one in this direction and split it to like this and then wrap the other one in the other direction. Gives it a nice seal and then I'll solder. I'm gonna solder later because I wanna make sure everything works first. Excuse the noise. Uh, so this is that white wire we said is 12 volt accessory, right? Yeah, so I got it and I found this blue and white wire. That's accessory run and start it goes dark and then lights and i think if i read on the again this is where you need the manual this is like a proper technician install manual it sounds like i go to that white wire uh is this the connector nope this connector sorry uh proper will be zero volts zero with key off yep 12 volts key is in the on accessory and then zero while cranking we just saw that and 12 volts back when it's running bam that's the right wire now the reason i'm not using these style this is basically a scotch lock a scotch lock i'm 99 percent sure these are the same they they pierce the wire basically break it um so they don't they don't hold up they're not a good connection but alarm companies use them um you know you're always better soldering and this this wire hasn't been cut it's been separated these it's just the way it is it, it crimps you know you're piercing the wire it's breaking a few strands and making a connection that you hope is tight and it's 
you know, yeah, my car still works. All right, this is one that I'm leery on because it's uh, the 12 volt to the starter, starting the vehicle. Uh, my box here has two wires on that terminal. Let's see, we got this. Yeah, these two, this yellow and blue with yellow and purple with blue tracer both go to that one terminal and that's the, the one I need. If I put in the key, So, if I pierce, I should be able to just pierce one of those and hope that it's going, I'm assuming, I should look at the relay. It's going to the relay. I, th I should be fine. Not 100%. I feel like one is better than the other. But, uh, we'll just, that's why I'm not soldering anything yet. Let's just cut one of those. Right, I have this other page. This is where I've been getting all my wiring. This is for my vehicle. He's saying it's a tan with blue. And I think I just found a tan with blue. But same thing, it's a double double terminal, but I'm gonna use that if they said that's what they use. Yeah, let's do that. Might be suspect like I am. This is all heavy gauge wire. Um, and I think that's because these are universal kits. Um, before cars had starter relays for the most part, American cars, I should say, 70s, 80s. These heavy wires went up to the ignition switch, and that was that was your ignition switch is what was making all the power to go right to the starter. Then uh, it's it's kind of dangerous having that much power going up in your column. So they finally did away with that, and hey, let's put a relay. The relay takes all the heavy gauge wire. We'll send some light duty wires up here to do the switching of the relay. So that's why. There's a size difference in wires here, so this, it doesn't matter. This is just doing 12 volts, but not a lot of amperage. That makes sense? Yeah, this is just a ground wire, but I'm still going to use heat shrink tubing, a crimp connector. I took the plastic off because I'm going to be, obviously, shrinking tubing instead of hard plastic tubing. Crimp that, and I found a nice bolt for the... Hood release, nice, it's all the metal frame. I'm gonna put it on that bolt. Let me ask you guys a question. So all the wiring that came with this kit is aluminum, aluminum core, whereas most cars use copper. Um, and I think it's for, well, I was told you can't use aluminum, but uh, further looking into it, it's they're saying it's fine and it's not as corrosive, but I think when you get dissimilar metals, it's gonna corrode like that aluminum wire on a metal terminal. I don't know, what's your, what's your two cents on this, guys? These are a crimp and seal connector I'm using. So they have a glue in them. Uh, there's some newer ones out that have a solder in them too. So look into those maybe. And just like that, we are powered up. Let's see how that fits under the cover. With one hand. Wanna get the uh, tripod mic? No. no, no. Why would you wanna do that? Why, why don't you just rush everything like you're working flat rate still? I should be able to put a bend in those terminals. Let me gently do that off camera. Okay, we're getting there. In the box, we have two remotes. One, two. They already got batteries. This is the antenna. This needs to be run up probably the A pillar by the windshield to get a good connection. I'm gonna hook that to this side. I think it said blue or black. It is blue. Yeah, it must be that blue. Um, and then the main connector over here and that gray connector for that brake light and we should be good to go. All right, let's just double check. Nothing is uh, touching anything. These are connected still decently. I mean, for testing purposes here. All wired in and every wire i think i need and i have to have my key in the ignition like i said i have a chip otherwise this thing will not start because anti-theft it needs to see this chip in the ignition before remote starters work and uh so we're going to try this All right, so just in the ignition i should be able to just 
hear it. Nope. Oh, there's the accessory. Try again. I didn't like something. Okay, maybe I need that other wire. Okay, figured out some stuff. So I did have to hook up that green wire, um, which we said was 12, says 12 volts ignition output input. Bah, I don't know. So I go into the manual here on the computer. It says 12 volts when you got power, no power, ignition off, ignition on, you have power, ignition on after it starts, something like that. You, you'll read it if you do this stupid project. So that got the car to crank, but it would crank and stall, crank and stall. So then I went back in and I learned it did. They, they should have this in the instructions, like um, do this before you start the vehicle. But this default has tackless sensing, so you don't need to hook up a tack wire. Uh, somehow it senses that the thing has started. So I think it's just cranking it for two or three seconds. So there's a learning procedure. You put your foot on the brake. Um, da, 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 da. I don't even know if that's the right menu. But alternator sensing, yeah, this is not what I'm talking about. But anyway, you put your foot on the brake. Uh, started with the key. Let's back up. Started with the key. Let it idle down because it was flooded from all these failed attempts. Foot on the brake, hold this for three seconds, your parking lights flash. Once it's supposed to be, it learned the uh, tack. And uh, actually, my parking lights flash and my interior lights, so it must be tied together. Uh, and so now let's see. I need to put the key in the key ignition. ignition. Here are the relays, fuel pump. Radio fires up. Woohoo! And as I thought, here's the parking lights flashing. So you can look from in house and see, oh, now they're on steady. Um, so, yeah, as I thought, I can go now, just turn the key to the on position, like I'm going to drive away, push the brake, and it doesn't stall. You know, if I had gotten in and just hit the brake, it shuts the engine off. And the other thing I read is by default, it only runs for 15 minutes. Uh, cold, cold winter. I remember doing a half hour, getting some heat in this thing. <laughs> but I don't know, we'll see what happens. Um, the other thing I probably will do is I'll probably get the aftermarket sensor that goes around the key. So I don't have to leave a key in the ignition. And what it does is it gives you a box you put under the dash somewhere with a blank key in it that has a chip in it and basically wire that it looks like power and ground so it's always thinks there's a key in it uh and so the remote starter doesn't need to see the chip it already sees it but that might be my next upgrade and then maybe the door locks because like i said right there somebody already tied in so all i gotta do is do those wires ah we'll see if i feel like it all right hope this helps somebody with the basically any remote starter but CompuStar, there was a video a guy doing one. He said to look up another company, their instructions. But uh, yeah, a little confusing. They don't make it easy, these wiring. And that's always been the case with anything. All right, guys, thank you. Enjoy. One more thing before I go. I should show you. Yes, I went and taped all these connections because they are voltage at all times or some of them like a big fat ignition wire. You don't want that shorting anywhere. Uh, and then I secured the box, or I will secure the box. I got plenty of room up here. Um, and then just make sure this is just rubber going through there. And then out under the hood, I'll probably put that wire loom just so everything's secure and safe. All right, uh, let's see how far away this remote will work. Because I ideally will be in the house. I don't usually park there, but let's go down to where I normally park. Yep.
And I just have the remote sitting on the dash. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to be up here. The car will be down here where the old seat is.